Ladies and gentlemen, some of you guys might have heard about this particular story. It was so dumb about what they reported as far as what happened to this little boy. I said, there is no way people are that damn stupid. And I thought to myself, I said, you know what? We've seen a lot of dumb things in 2020. And I said, I can't put it past. I can't put it past us in this society. We're going to talk about a little boy. Let me see if I can skip to that right there. This little boy apparently was kidnapped based on what the mother and other people are claiming. Saying that this little boy was kidnapped, but he was taken to a Salvation Army. Not Salvation Army, but a Goodwill. A Goodwill and dropped off. And I have so many questions and so many problems with this story. So let me just tell you what happened before I give you my opinion. A woman who claimed to be the mother of that little boy was abandoned at a Mississippi Goodwill on Monday is asserting that she did not leave her son behind. The two-year-old boy by the name of Sergio, S-E-R-G-I-O, Sergio, two years old, was left at a South Haven store on State Line Road at 9.50 a.m., seen on surveillance footage being dropped off by two men and one woman who stopped their red SUV at a nearby gas station. But the boy's mother, by the name of Antoinette Smith, spoke with Memphis activist Barbara Burris on Facebook Live. She was on live, sharing she wasn't the woman seen in the surveillance footage arriving at the nearby gas station. What she did was she got on there, and I'm not sure if they actually got on a video chat, if she actually showed her face, because if she didn't show her face, then that might actually be a problem. Okay? But let's move on. We'll get there. Antoinette Smith shared that she had met up with a male acquaintance, a male friend, a male acquaintance, on Sunday to go to Nashville, Tennessee leaving Sergio with the man's sister in Memphis. I'm going to read that again, and I'm going to see if any of you guys have a problem with what I just read. The mother told her that she met up with a male acquaintance. Apparently, this man has to be a pretty good friend if you trusted this man to this point. To go to Nashville, Tennessee, I'm assuming that's, it says Nashville, I'm assuming that's Tennessee. Leaving her son, Sergio, with the man's sister, which also would have to mean that you have a large level of trust with this woman. Y'all gotta be besties, y'all gotta be family members, y'all gotta be something. Otherwise, why would you leave your kid with this man's sister? Okay? Bookmark that part in your mind. We'll come back to it. <laughs> we'll come back to it. And I want y'all to notice which t-shirt I'm wearing today. Does anybody remember what this shirt is that I'm wearing? Do y'all remember what this shirt means? Babies for benefits. There's a reason I'm wearing this shirt today. I want y'all to remember. Bookmark that. We'll come back to it. It wasn't until later However, that the acquaintance revealed to Smith, Antoinette Smith, the mother, that the woman was actually his girlfriend. If I knew that, if I knew that, I wouldn't have left my baby like that. Ain't no way I would have left my baby. That's all I got. That's all I got with me. The mother, Antoinette Smith, declared. Antoinette Smith said that she was abandoned at a Nashville store herself after she refused to work for the man. He was like, you better get out there and sell some ass and all that type of stuff. And I told him, I'm not doing nothing, Smith shared. Even though that's a double negative, y'all know when she say, I ain't gonna do nothing. That means she's not going to do anything. It's a double negative, but let's move past that. We're not gonna be the grammar police today. So he told her she better get out there and go sell her body. And she said, eyes ain't going to do that, massa. <laughs> the FBI arrested 
one of the suspects in connection to the case on Monday afternoon at a Kroger in Cordova, Tennessee, the Shelby County Sheriff's Office confirmed. That person's name has not been released. But because I got the federal document, DJ Just J is probably going to give y'all the name of not only one of those people, but of two of those people. I have the FBI document. Would you guys like to hear that information? I'd be more than happy to share it with you. If you guys will click that thumbs up, share this stream and let other people know that we're live. And then I can give you guys some more details like that. Now, Burris arranged for Smith to be picked up in Nashville and brought back to the Memphis area. <clears throat> the baby boy Sergio still remains in Child Protective Services custody. The toddler, too young to know his own name, was left outside a Goodwill donation center with a note which reportedly said his mother cannot take care of him anymore. I want y'all to bookmark that in your brains. Bookmark that. They say that this two-year-old boy was too young to know his own name. Does anybody have a problem with what I just said? Two years old, doesn't know his own name. They left a note and the note said, that the mother cannot take care of this boy anymore. Bookmark that in your mind. We'll come back to it. Security camera images released by the police show that he was dropped off at the South Haven store by a man who was walking, wearing a mask and a bucket hat and left with a change of clothes at 9.50 a.m. on that Monday. Officers released a photo of the little boy who was not wearing any socks or a warm coat and also photos of the two suspects, a man and a woman, and the vehicle they were driving when the child was abandoned. Nearly six hours later, they arrested a person related to the incident. A spokesperson for the South Haven Police Department initially said, a child abandoned at a Goodwill drop-off location at State, 50, State 57 State Line Road, East and South Haven. The suspect is a light-skinned black male wearing black jogging pants and a black cowboy hat. Dropped off the child with a plastic bag containing a change of clothes and a handwritten note. The suspect then left the scene on foot. Responding officers were unable to locate the suspect. The male child is approximately two years old and the two-year-old boy, the two-year-old boy, I repeat, the two-year-old boy is unable to give his name or the name of his parents or relatives. Y'all might be pissed off when I give y'all what my real thoughts are. Police Chief Macon Moore later said the suspect was taken into custody at 3.30 p.m. on Monday but no suspect information or changes are being released. He added, we would like to thank all of the citizens who showed concern for the child. Rest assured he is well and being taken care of and will be reunited with the family when CPS determines this is proper, which I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I want to know from y'all if y'all think the CPS should give the mom back her son. And I'm gonna tell y'all why I believe that they should not. The cooperation from the community and a united effort from law enforcement led to the speedy apprehension of the suspects. That's only the first part of this story, but let me give you guys the news videos. Let me show you the fair usage, and then we're gonna talk about the other portion of that information, which I'm gonna give you guys, the, uh, the people that they're arrested, I'm gonna give y'all their name, then I'm gonna give you my thoughts and why the mom should not get custody back. You wanna stay tuned for this one. I'm trying to tell you, let's get it.
Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. I promise you guys, I'm going to play a couple of videos after these videos are over. Y'all are going to want to stay tuned for what else I have to say. Because we got a lot to talk about. We're going to reveal the information, who was arrested, and then I'm going to tell y'all why I believe the mom shouldn't get custody back. Let's go. A two-year-old boy was left at a Mississippi Goodwill this week, sparking a big conversation on social media and bringing safe haven laws back into the spotlight. A Goodwill worker told a news station, a man walked up to him on Monday, told him the mother simply could not care for the boy any longer and left. The little boy had a bag of clothes with a note inside, but it didn't identify him or his parents. Police released video of this red car and a man and woman who drove off. Police say they have arrested one person, but they've not indicated that person's relationship to the child or what type of charges they may face. For people in Metro Atlanta, it might remind you of a similar situation. It happened with a nonverbal teenager almost exactly a year ago. Police say the 14 year old's mother left him outside of Grady Hospital, overwhelmed trying to care for him and her three other children. She was later charged with child cruelty. The story gained a lot of attention online. Many people expressed sympathy for the teenager and for his mother, Diana Elliott, so much so that moms who didn't even know her showed up to her bond hearing to support her. And we're seeing a similar reaction, Jennifer, to this case in Mississippi. Yeah, let's take a look at a couple of comments that we got on our Facebook page. Nicole says the parents were obviously reaching out as a cry for help. She's praying for the little boy. Ron says he can't fault these parents if they can't take care of a child. We do want to point out that there are resources for parents and families who feel helpless in these situations. And Cheryl, advocates say that the problem is they often don't know about these options. Yeah, we wanted to share a few, starting with Georgia's safe haven law. It gives mothers 30 days after they deliver a child to leave a newborn at a hospital, fire station, or police station. They don't have to answer any questions. They don't have to give ID, but they must leave the baby with a worker or safely with a volunteer. For children older than that, the state allows parents to give up their child to defax an adoption agency or an adoption attorney at no charge. That's really important for people to know. That is an option that doesn't cost any money. Adoption attorneys will also protect the parent's identity. If you need more resources, you can go to 11alive.com. Police are seeking the public's help after this two-year-old boy was abandoned at a Mississippi Goodwill store. Police say a man walked the child into a Goodwill store around 10 a.m. Monday and took off. The child had a plastic bag containing a change of clothes and a note. Authorities said he is so little he cannot provide officers with his name or the name of his parents. The man was not located by police during the sweep of the area. The employee at the Goodwill who took the child told reporters that the man walked up to him and the child's mother couldn't care for him before walking away. The note police referenced was written on a piece of paper towel and said child abandoned, no phone number for mom and was in a plastic Kroger bag along with clothes and some food. The child wasn't dressed properly for how cold it was, the man said, but he was in good spirits. He was laughing, playing with toys and eating food until police arrived on scene. He was also able to hold up two fingers when asked how old he was. Surveillance cameras in the area capture images of the man and a woman reportedly connected to the incident and if you know the child and can provide any additional information, please call police. It's captured on camera, a masked man in a hat walks the two-year-old boy we now know is named Sergio to a gas station parking lot around 9.50. They're bound for this Goodwill drop-off location where the man leaves the boy with a Goodwill employee. He doesn't give anyone's name, just a vague explanation. That's can we take the baby in because the mother abandoned him. Antoinette Smith says she's that child's mother and she did not abandon her son. Speaking to Memphis activist Barbara Burris over the phone, she says she'd met up with a male acquaintance who took her to Nashville, leaving baby Sergio with the man's sister in Memphis. But she claims the man later confessed it wasn't his sister, but a girlfriend the child had been left with. If I 
knew that, I said I wouldn't have left my baby like that. Ain't no way I would have left my baby. That's all I got with me. Smith also claims the man abandoned her, leaving her at a Nashville store and driving off after she refused to work for him. He was like, you better get out here, get out there and sell some Surveillance video shows the man was accompanied by another man and a woman right before he abandoned the child. Smith says that woman isn't her. The FBI arresting one of the trio in Memphis at this Cordova Kroger, but police aren't saying who. I was like, what is he doing out here with a baby out here this cold? In Mississippi, it is legal to surrender infants, but only for up to three days after birth, and only to emergency service providers. Lorene Cady runs the House of Grace Women's Shelter in South Haven and says while none of the women she's helped have ever contemplated abandoning a child, for some, they're just that desperate. The new mothers face really difficult situations because you can't sleep in a car with a baby. You can't sleep on a park bench with a baby. You have to, it has to have shelter. Yesterday, we were told that you, about two-year-old boy who was abandoned by a North Mississippi Goodwill store, well, now a woman claiming to be his mother says she did not abandon him. The boy was left at the store in South Haven Monday morning with a, chance, a change of clothes and a note. A store employee says the man who brought him in said that the boy's mother had abandoned him. Uh, but Antoinette Smith says that she never had any intention of giving up her son, whose name is Sergio. Smith says that she met with a man, a male acquaintance, and headed to Nashville, and that Sergio was left with the man's girlfriend in Memphis. She later found out that it wasn't his sister, but a girlfriend. If I knew that, I said I wouldn't have left my baby like that. Ain't no way I would have left my baby. That's all I got with me. Smith says that she was left behind in Nashville after she refused to work for the man. So I want y'all to hear this. Let's hear, th let's hear the mom's words again. She later found out that it wasn't his sister, but a girlfriend. If I knew that, I said I wouldn't have left my baby like that. Ain't no way I would have left my baby. That's all I got with me. Smith says that she was left behind in Nashville after she refused to work for the man. Surveillance video shows that the boy arriving at the store in a red SUV with two men and a woman. The FBI says one of the three has been arrested but did not identify who. Meanwhile, Smith is on her way back to the area and Sergio remains in CPS custody. I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all can't believe everything that y'all heard. How many of y'all heard this story and y'all felt bad for the mom? Woo-wee. If y'all felt bad for that mom, y'all need to be ashamed of y'all damn selves. Because I'm about to bust this thing wide open like a stripper on Friday night. In other news, police in South Haven are searching for two people after a two-year-old little boy is abandoned at a Goodwill store. Police say a man was seen walking the child to the store this morning before taking off in a red SUV. The two-year-old was left with a change of clothes and a note. Investigators say he's so small he doesn't even know his own name or the names of his parents. Surveillance video captured the man and a woman connected to the case, according to WREG. A suspect was taken into custody in Memphis. The child is now in the custody of Mississippi Child Protective Services. Guys, I can't hold water like a, like a bucket with a big ass hole in it. I gotta talk about this. First of all, that's the mother, her Facebook page. And let me, let me show y'all what she wrote. Let's take a step back. I want y'all to read this. It's right there on the screen. Look at this. The mother, Mohawk Dime, the mother's name is Mo. Yeah, you might want to cover your eyes for this one. <laughs> cover your eyes and ears. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. The mother Mohawk Dime wrote, "Mind all over the place. I own. I it's actually I on, but they mean I don't need no calls right now. She means I don't need any phone calls right now. I gotta translate this shit. Th things that happen when you don't wanna f." with a no good mf'er y'all please pray for me i don't need the negative the negativity mf'er drop my baby off at a store because i wouldn't be his trick and left me in nashville tennessee 
Anybody that know me know how I feel about my baby. I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me. This is the truth. Sergio, mama love you, and I'm um, and um on the way. Man, anybody who speaks like this needs to be slapped real hard for not passing elementary school. God, dog. I mean, we talk like toddlers. And speaking about talking about toddlers, let me address a few things with some of y'all. And I'm telling y'all, this is going to make some of y'all a little mad. First of all, let's take a look at something. Let's take a look at this because some of y'all didn't call this out in the chat. And I've been waiting on y'all to call this out. But I guess y'all are scared to say something in the chat. We got a free chat. This is, a free, this is free speech. If y'all think something, you can say it. I want y'all to look at this. Because a lot of y'all didn't address this at all. Let's take a look at this. I want y'all to look at this picture. Matter of fact, let me make this bigger. So I can make sure y'all ain't got no excuse to not see this. Sergio, oh Sergio, let's make this a bit bigger, now, I want y'all to take a look at this picture right here, I want y'all to look at this and tell me what about this picture, about this man, about this individual, just the mental image of this says pimp. When y'all see this, do y'all think P-I-M-P, pimp? Anybody? What about this woman? What about her says pimp or pimp's girlfriend? I'm just asking a question. Matter of fact, let me get that off the screen. What about this vehicle? What about this vehicle says pimp? Anybody? Anybody want to address this? What about this vehicle to y'all says, oh yeah, that's a pimp vehicle. That's a pimp car. That's a pimp ride. Now, I know the recession didn't hit. I know businesses are closed. But last thing I last time I checked, I thought they said pimping and hoeing is the oldest business or the oldest industry in the world. Buying and selling sex has been going on regardless of the recession, regardless of COVID, regardless of whatever is going on. One thing that has never slowed down with being sold and trafficked is sex and if you ask me that vehicle don't look like a pimp ride <laughs> that don't look like a pimp ride to me but maybe i roll maybe that's how pimps are rolling nowadays but let me call out something else i want y'all to look at this picture one more again Here's my question. I want y'all to look at how skinny, how small, and how frail this dude is. And I want y'all to remember that this dude is standing next to a two-year-old child. That is a small man. That's a small guy. Y'all look at that car. Look at the players in this situation. Look at the, the girlfriend, the so-called sister, girlfriend. You look at her. Does any of this look like a pimping situation? Anything about this? Not the shoes, not the clothing, not the car. The dude don't, the dude can, barely looks like he'd be able to restrain a two-year-old baby, let alone a grown-ass woman. Now, let's keep going. Let's keep going. If they turned in this child, then that means that they would actually bring heat to their situation. So I want y'all to understand this. If what she's trying to say is correct, 
and the mom is saying that they tried to kidnap her and her baby and force her into sexual servitude. They tried to force this woman into sexual servitude. Why would they turn the child in? Because if they turn the child in, then that's actually going to bring heat to their situation. That's going to bring the heat in their direction. Why would they turn the child in if their goal was to pimp the mother? And on top of that, not only did they not get a chance to, to pimp the mother, they turned the baby in at the, at, the, at the Goodwill, at the local Goodwill. And then the mom says, I ain't selling no ass. I ain't going to do nothing. I ain't going to do nothing, massa. And the, and the dude was just like, okay. And they abandoned the mother without incident. How many of y'all thought about it like I did? How many of y'all took a little bit of the common sense that y'all have? The little bit that's that's up here. Took a little bit of common sense and said, wait a minute, that don't make any damn sense. You don't even have to have a lot of common sense. How many of y'all, because I took the little bit of common sense that I had to exert for this story and said, that's total BS. That makes no sense. But wait, there's more. Who kidnaps a person and lets that person go without getting a damn thing from that person? How does that make any sense? Matter of fact, I want y'all to remember the fact that the mother, in her own words, said that she was going from one place to to another she was supposed to be getting a ride and for her to be getting a ride to go from one place to another in between that time she was going to drop her kid off with what she thought was this man's sister so i guess she thought her kid would be safe but she didn't even know who the fuck this woman was because she didn't know that this woman was this man's girlfriend and not his sister. So that means that you were going to turn your baby over to a woman that you don't know, ma'am. Huh. Really? Oh, man, y'all better have y'all diapers on tonight, boy, because this is not for the faint of heart. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it a little bit slower. The mother was supposed to be, I'm assuming, going to see someone or getting a ride to go somewhere, maybe to go spend some time with a man or whatever the case is. But in between that time, she said, hey, I's got a baby. I's got a baby. I can't take my baby to where I'm going. So to me, if you can't take your kid with where you're going, that lets me believe, that leads me to believe that you were going for an illicit deed. Shout out to illicitdeeds.com, by the way. You were going to go do something messed up that you couldn't have your kid with you, which is why you dropped your kid off. Why would you go anywhere that you can't take your kid with you? So if that's the case, then that's already a big ass Red flag, strike one against the mother. Strike two, you said that this man gave you an explanation as to who this woman was, and yes, it's safe for you to leave your kid with this woman. Okay? If you even have to question who this person is, then logically, let me dig in my brain. Logically, you might not want to leave your kid with somebody if you have to ask who the fuck they are let alone the fact that he gave you one description and then come to find out this person is a whole nother person. Strike number two, big ass red flag. Yes? And the biggest one of all, strike number three against the mother and why I believe that she should not get custody of her kid. Here's strike number three. You told us on air and we got the recorded phone call that they tried to kidnap you. And he said, you better go out there and go sell some ass or something. First of all, a pimp is not gonna tell you to go out there and go sell some ass or something. A pimp is generally gonna be a lot more descriptive than that. And a pimp is usually going to be giving you a lot more instruction than that. And let alone that, this has gotta be the, sh the, the shittiest pimp in the world that says that I want you to go make me my money. And you say, I ain't gonna go make your money. And he say, fine, I'm kicking you out the car. 
and abandon you. Where do they do that at? Where do they do that kind of pimping at? How does that make any sense? Are the police falling for this? Are y'all falling for this story? Okay, y'all might. <laughs> okay, guys, it's about to get a little bit deeper. Y'all click that thumbs up. We're at 302. Y'all click that thumbs up. 98 more people click that thumbs up. I need y'all to put Pippin is, Pippin ain't never dead. Pippin ain't never scared. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Pimpin' ain't dead and Pimpin' ain't scared. Scared money don't make no money. You feel me? There is, that's got to be the worst pimp in the world. If you say, go out there and go sell some ass or something. And she say, I's not going to do it. And you say, okay, we'll get out my car. What? That's the way pimping works now? Huh. Okay, but I, here, here's where y'all might get a little bit upset about what I'm about to say. <laughs> How does this mother claim that she cares about her son so much that her two-year-old son doesn't even know his own damn name? Did DJ Just J just say that? Yeah, I did. Because it's common sense to me, but apparently common sense ain't common no more. How do you raise a two-year-old child that doesn't know its own name? Excuse me, ma'am. What the hell have you been doing for the past 24 months if your own son doesn't even know his name? Where is the logic in that? Now, I will say this. The boy has not been diagnosed and there is no proof that something is wrong with this boy and he is not mentally challenged because if he was mentally challenged, then the mother, since she cares about her son so much, would have taken him to get diagnosed and get him to get to to give to give a um, a response from the doctors to say that yes, to qualify it and say that this boy has a problem. But she didn't do that. This boy hasn't been diagnosed with any type of mental issues. He's not slow. He does not have a disability. That's what I'm trying to tell you. How can you just claim somebody has a disability, but you don't go take time out to go find out that this kid has a disability? That's still two big problems. Do y'all not understand that? That's two big problems. If the kid has a disability and you didn't go find out that he has a disability, that's a problem. And it's still a problem if you have a perfectly, perfectly fine and healthy kid that doesn't know his name at two years old. Kids are supposed to go to pre-K at age five. When this is over, I'm going to show y'all a two-year-old that actually gave her parents a counseling lesson. If y'all have not seen... This, this little girl, and shout out to this little girl. I played it on my stream at the end of the stream last night. This mother and this father apparently were having like a marriage uh, situation, an issue where they were arguing about something and the little girl set them down and talked to them. She's two years old. This little girl talked to her parents and counseled her parents and told the parents why they shouldn't be arguing, why they shouldn't be fighting, and that they should take their emotions down very low so that they can come together and be a family. That's from a two-year-old. From a girl. But you mean to tell me this two-year-old boy doesn't even know his own name? 
Huh. Thank you. I, I know we got some people in the chat, some mothers in the chat, some people that are familiar with kids. Most kids respond to their name by one years old, maybe even earlier than that. My daughter knew her name way before one years old. <laughs> so that's another big red flag. How do you not know your own name at two? Also, why did all of this happen? I believe the mother simply did not want this kid. This mother hates this kid because of the kid's father. And this mother probably promised those people who have been arrested, she probably promised them to give them her tax check if they play along with this whole big ass lie. Now, what I just said actually follows logic. Hashtag babies for benefits. I believe that the mom did not love this kid because if you love this kid, this kid would at least know his name. You would be talking to this kid. You would be working with this kid. He'd be able to speak sentences. He'd be able to talk. He'd be able to interact. He'd be able to do all kinds of stuff. If you invest and spend the time with that kid, that's what love does. That's what a responsible parent does. I know kids that can learn multiple languages by the time that they're two years old, let alone just something as simple as your God-given des designation, your name. I personally believe that the mom did not love this kid, nor did she ever. She probably didn't like who she had the kid by, which is why you ain't heard from the daddy. And she probably said, if y'all take this kid and pull this off, then I can get this kid out of my life since I don't love this kid. And, 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 and tax time is right around the corner. So I'm going to throw y'all a little something, something extra because I'm going to still claim this boy on my taxes. Now, doesn't that actually make more sense to come up with this wild ass scenario as opposed to what the mom is trying to say that she was kidnapped and they tried to force her into sexual servitude? And you said no, and they just said, okay, no problem. But they didn't give you your kid back, and they dropped the kid off at a Goodwill store. But your kid was supposed to be being watched by the girlfriend or the sister. But you want us to believe that story. How many of y'all were able to follow everything that I just said? Or how many of y'all got totally confused? <laughs> It's okay if you got confused. Let me break this down for you. This is coming from a government website. Justice.gov. Memphis, Tennessee. Y'all can see it right there on the screen. That's about as big as I can make that. Probably about right there. Memphis, Tennessee. Jeremy Fitzgerald, who's 34 years old, and Terlesia Turner, who's 29 years old, and her name is spelled T-U-R-L-I-S-C-E-A Turner. Terlesia Turner, 29 years old, and Jeremy Fitzgerald, 34 years old, both of Memphis, Tennessee, have been federally charged in a criminal complaint with kidnapping a two-year-old boy whom they later abandoned at a Goodwill store in South Haven, Mississippi. D. Michael Donovan, U.S. attorney, announced the kidnapping charge in federal complaint today. According to the information presented in the complaint, Fitzgerald offered to have Turner, posing as Fitzgerald's sister, babysit the child while Fitzgerald and the child's mother went to Nashville, Tennessee, overnight on December 13th of 2020. Turner agreed to watch and keep the child with her overnight while Fitzgerald and the child's mother were in Nashville, Tennessee. Fitzgerald demanded that the child's mother work for him as a prostitute. And when she refused, Fitzgerald left her in Nashville and he did not answer her repeated telephone calls. <laughs> How does that even make any sense? That actually makes it worse. 
But let's keep going. Fitzgerald did, however, speak to the child's aunt. And in that conversation, Fitzgerald demanded money for the return of the child. Turner was aware that Fitzgerald had demanded money in exchange for the child's return. The next morning, Fitzgerald, Turner, and an unknown subject drove and transported the child to a state boundary from Memphis to South Haven, Mississippi. When they stopped at a gas station, Fitzgerald took the child out of the car to a nearby Goodwill store and abandoned him there. Turner went into the gas station and she knew that the child had been left there at the Goodwill store. South Haven Task Force officers recovered surveillance video that showed the maroon vehicle that Fitzgerald and Turner had driven to South Haven with the child. The suspect vehicle was observed on Germantown Parkway in Shelby County on the afternoon of December the 14th of 2020. When law enforcement responded to the area, Fitzgerald crashed the vehicle and was later transported to a hospital with minor injuries. Deputies found Turner inside a nearby Kroger store, a grocery store, wearing the same clothing as in the surveillance video. Both sus subjects were taken into custody without further incident. If convicted of kidnapping and violation of 18 U.S.C. subsection uh, 1201, the defendants each face a possible sentence of 20 years and up to life in federal prison and five years to life of supervised release and a 25, uh, excuse me, wow, shit, a $250,000 fine. There is no parole in the federal system. The case will be presented to a federal grand jury at a later date to consider an indictment against the defendants where additional felony uh, uh, additional federal charges can, may be added. The charges and allegations contained in the complaint are merely accusations of criminal conduct, not evidence. It's not evidence. That's just a charge. The defendants are presumed innocent until unless and until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and convicted through due process of law. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, Shelby County Sheriff's Office, and the South Haven Police Department are continuing to investigate this case. Attorney U.S. Attorney, uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney Lauren De uh, Deliri is prosecuting this case on behalf of the government. Here's what's going to happen. Who actually wants to do fed time in the federal prison? Who actually wants to do fed time? Nobody. Because the feds have a an extremely high conviction rate. And I'm going to tell you, when you're facing fed time, people get the, oh, they get the singing for the high heavens. Do they not? Do they not? They get the singing. And what I'm saying is that they're going to tell the real story once court starts to happen. And I'm telling y'all that this story that the mother is putting out there doesn't sound right. And I believe that the mother is lying. And I believe that they're going to implicate the mother and prove the fact that something about this story, like Keith Sweat said, something, something just ain't right about this story. There are too many red flags and too many things that don't make sense. And why would you drop your kid off just to go take this trip? What matter of fact, what, what the mother should have said was why was she was taking this trip in the first place and needed to, to drop her kid off so badly? Why did she need to drop her kid off so badly that she didn't even know who she was dropping her kid off with? So if the point and purpose was to get ransom money for the kid, then why didn't they just stop at taking the kid? But yet you we, we proceed further to this so-called pimping story. And we're saying, and the mom is trying to lead us to believe that they also wanted to pimp you out and get money for your kid. I'm not saying people aren't devious like that, but what I'm saying is where there's smoke, there's usually fire. And I believe that these people who are charged Jeremy Fitzgerald, who's 34 years old, and Terlisa Turner, who's 29 years old, are going to sing in court. They're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. 
and they're gonna tell on this mom. And I and, and they don't think don't think that this is not a realistic scenario that I just painted, especially when we see the egregious things that people do only for the benefits that they can collect from these babies. I want y'all to remember that I said it first, okay? This is your boy DJ Just J with the AFC, where we're gonna continue to advocate for Pippin and Hoenn? No, we're gonna advocate for children first and advocate for people to stop lying and advocate for people to really act like they care about their kids. There is absolutely, unless a kid has a diagnosed condition, there is no reason for a normal, healthy two-year-old kid to not know their own name. That's ridiculous. I'm your boy DJ Judge J with AFC, where we're going to continue to keep speaking for our babies. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll revisit this story whenever they start going to court. And I promise you guys, a lot of the things that I said, y'all will see them come up in court and you'll see it play out. But we'll give you guys an update whenever we come back. Y'all have a great day. Have a great night. We'll see you guys on the next stream. Peace.